Okay, how is everybody? We are talking Cinemax's Warrior today, episode five, blood and other stuff. Only they don't use the word stuff, they use another word, SH. I'm gonna let you fill in the blank, but you get the idea by knowing what the blank probably is. So, I love this episode. Can't wait to hear what you think about it. Let me just tell you guys, listen. If you are not watching this show, you really should be. And I'm also going to say, if you are a fan of Into the Badlands and you are not watching this show, you really should be because this show is fabulous. We're going to do two things here today. Number one, we are going to talk about my thoughts about this latest episode of Warrior. And then I do want to do a comparison between Warrior and Into the Badlands. Listen, I feel like now we're five episodes in. I know enough about what's going on in Warrior to make a fair comparison. Let's talk about this episode of Warrior. Man. It was so good, easily my favorite episode. Now, there's a whole bunch going on here. I wanna give a very general overview of the show and then get into what I liked about it. In this episode, basically we have Assam and Young June that are coming back to San Francisco. They are carrying a body for Father Jen that we find out has gold in it. Now on this journey, they are traveling with two folks that are very racist and a pastor and another cowboy that's just as racist as the other two folks, which is a white couple, and they are real jerks. They find themselves going through a town which they have to stop and they're all in a saloon. Now when they're in that saloon, they find themselves being robbed. They thwart that first attempt at robbery, but one of the outlaws gets away and the lady that owns the saloon says he'll be back, but he'll be back with more people. So this whole episode is really them prepping for the return of that outlaw and how they're going to deal with that conflict. The outlaw does come back, they deal with the conflict, and Assam and Young June ride off with the gold back to San Francisco. That is a very brief overview of what happened. There are so many good things about this show that I will tell you, man, like the more I watch the show, the more I really, really enjoy the show. This show is a beast. The first thing I wanna talk about is the writing, how they write the show. It's really, really smart. You guys have heard me say that before. So when I say pay attention to what you're seeing in terms of how they write it, because it's really important because they do some really cool things. So the first thing that jumps out to me is how they execute the language in the show. So here's what I mean. There are a few scenes where Assam and Young June are talking to each other. Now we hear them in English, but then the camera will pan to someone else that hears them in Chinese. I don't know if that language is Mandarin or Cantonese. I'm not sure what it is, but we hear them in a Chinese language. And it's so cool the way they do that. They do several little tricks like that, or they do several little kind of transition tricks to take us from one scene to another. It's really cool to see, and it makes the cinematography or the production of the show top notch. In this episode also, there's a lot of stuff we find out about Young June. Like, I feel like this episode is one that really focuses on him and allows us to see kind of really what's inside of him. Stuff that we don't necessarily see from him in San Francisco because I feel like he has to kind of put on this air being part of the hopway and amongst the other folks that are there. But we do see that this guy has a sensitive side, has a caring side, and we do see some insecurities in, in him. And this episode was really good to establish Young June's character and to take us a little deeper into what is going on with him behind the hood, so to speak. It's it's also interesting to see that Assam encounters a relationship that is happening in that little saloon by an Asian owner and his American wife, and he starts to reflect on what is possible between he and Penelope. Now, we don't get a jump cut or anything. We don't see any flashback or anything like that with Assam thinking about Penelope, but he's starting to see this relationship and thinking to himself, man, like this could work. It's also interesting that young June interrupts kind of that school of thought and says, you see that going on over there? Like, that'll never work. That can never work in San Francisco. So he's starting to think about that as well. So there's a whole bunch of pieces in this show that are really good. A lot of story driven stuff that happens in this show that are really good that move us along in the story of Warrior. We, we also get to see the solidifying of the relationship between Assam and Young June. This is important because certainly these two are growing closer together, but we do know that there is a major conflict between Young June and Assam, especially considering Assam's sister is part of the rival tongue of Young June's father. So as the two of them get together, it'll be really fascinating to see how they work that out in the story because essentially they're growing together, but they are still actually fundamental enemies if you take into consideration that Mei Ling is Assam's sister and Young June is Father Jin's son. So it'll be fascinating to see how they work all of that out. Outside of the story aspect, which was really good, this whole setup was amazing. This was a daggone Western for Assam and Young June. All of the different aspects that went on here. 
It was cool to see them taken out of the element of San Francisco and brought into kind of the rawness of the West and to see how they dealt with all of that. And then there were some really, really nice tropes when we have young June with the six shooters on. We have Assam and young June with the hats on. All of that was really nice. Some really, really nice nods to classical Westerns in this. Now we can't leave off without talking about the fight choreography, which was tremendous. This thing was amazing. Here's the deal. The martial arts execution in this was on point, and man, if they don't nail some of the movements of Bruce Lee, I'm telling you, Assam, <laughs> ooh, it's so good. They give us some of Bruce's classic movements. There's one scene where Assam steps up on the table. He's just knocked the guy off his feet. He jumps down on the guy's chest or on his stomach. He shifts his hips, and you hear that cracking sound. And that is a classic Bruce Lee move. So it's really cool how when Assam is fighting, we see these little nuances of Bruce, these little callbacks to Bruce when we used to see him on camera. And I love the way that they reflect that in his fighting style. Also, how they mixed this with the gunplay was really well executed as well. I gotta say, man, the cinematographers did an amazing job with this because this was a really, really cool fight scene to see. So listen, Warrior is really good, but how does Warrior stack up to Into the Badlands? So the more I think about this, the more I would say this. If you're a fan of Into the Badlands, then you likely will be a fan of Warrior too. Are they the same show? They're not the same show, and that's what's important to mention. I've said this before in other videos. They're not trying to be the same show, but they do bring a nice martial arts element to two different types of genres. While both are kind of action adventure shows, I would say, I would say The Warrior is much more of an action drama show because the story is much more dramatic than ITV. That's not to say that ITV doesn't have drama, but the setting or the writing or the context of Warrior is much more drama based than Into the Badlands. That's what I would say. Now, if you're comparing these two shows, I would actually say it's a mistake to do it. I would actually say if you are a fan of martial arts TV, then both of these shows are great and both of these shows are shows that you should be checking out. And I think that you will love them for different reasons. Now, I said before that I really liked ITV because ITB actually checks all of the boxes for me because like what we cover on this channel, it checks my sci-fi, action, adventure, and fantasy box. Warrior does not check all of the boxes for me. It checks one box for me and that is my action box, but it's drama is so good that I really, really enjoy the show sci-fi elements, nor does it have the fantasy elements like Into the Badlands, which kind of has a complete package. But I no longer can say one show is better than the other. I really appreciate them for individual entities. And I think that if you are not watching Warrior and you enjoy martial arts content, this is a show that you definitely need to check out. Okay guys, so follow me over here where we're gonna get into more Warrior content. Make sure that if you are not part of the community, you hit that subscribe button. I will see you on that next Warrior video and I will see you in the comments. Peace.